Hey, what's up? So I built the body of the creature to Hollywood perfection. And now, that thing is on the loose. You could watch how I did it right now as I chase this thing down. Include a creature frame from another one of my videos, I'll have the link posted below. Seven to eight pool noodles, scissors or a blade to cut the noodles, stretch wrap, spray foam, two foam rings, a heat gun, marker, electrical tape, and crafter's wire. Using the idea of the creature frame that I posted in another video, I'm going to make this pumpkin creature a little more permanent to this particular frame. I can use other frames for some of the other creatures, but I'm going to be molding pieces onto this frame. I'll still be able to take them apart, but this frame will always be the pumpkin creature frame. We're going to start off with a good old pool noodle. These things are great because weather doesn't really bother them. They like the water. They're really light, so it doesn't weigh down your project. I'm going to cut this noodle into four strips. Now once you have your noodle cut into the four pieces, the four strips, we're going to stretch wrap or saran wrap each one of these so that they start taking on a vine-like quality. Now for the vines that you're going to use on the legs, at one end leave a long tail because this is going to help us connect to the feet. This next part, you're going to want some leather gloves, not plastic, because that would be a bad idea. We are going to use the heat gun, and we are going to lightly heat up all this plastic, making it a permanent part of this noodle. Just going to go across it really fast so it doesn't shrink up too much. I just want it to tighten up so it doesn't come off. Crazy enough, every time I do this, the noodles just start curling up like, uh, like a vine, just naturally putting a, a twist on the thing. It works for me. Anywhere that the PVC is connecting to any of the slip joints, you want to go ahead and draw a line with a marker at each point where they connect because when we put the vines and all the other stuff on we don't need to go above that line because that line goes inside the slip joint. It may also help if you above the line write what this joint is. is the shoulder joint, this one's the spine, so when I put it back together later it's real quick and easy. I know what goes where. <laughs> Randomly starting with the shoulder joints. I'm going to take two of the strips of noodles. I'm going to put one on one side of the pipe and one on the other side of the pipe and I'm going to tape these to the end. Trust me, it just makes this much easier. Remember to keep it below the line that you drew. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of twist them over the top of each other at first in the front and then you're going to flip it and do it in the back. And then you'll flip it again, do it in the front again. If you don't do it that way, it gets really crazy. If you do it all the folds in the front, so you go around, just do the front again. <laughs> it just ends up looking like you got one vine going up through the other and honestly the back end gets left really really open. So twist in the front then twist in the back and repeat. Once you get to the bottom you're gonna have quite a bit left over for these smaller pieces like the shoulder so you can just start twisting it back up and it'll really kind of fill that the the gaps in a little bit more. Then you'll have all the ends 
like the vines are really just climbing up this thing or, or out in this case. Next thing I did is now I'm holding it all together with just a light layer of shrink wrap. And I'm going to heat this on now and it'll, it'll burst in a couple of places and it'll stretch in a couple of places, but it'll hold this noodle on really well now. You'll see it first getting tight. Giving it a little bit of detail and depth. But now I'm going to keep going in some of these holes like this here so it, it just bursted right open because I'm actually going to take spray foam and I'm going to fill in all these little gaps. I'm also trying to purposely leave some of these stretches across the holes here if you can see that because later on those are going to look really cool. So some spray foam, love this stuff. Filled in all the gaps. And now, yes, it looks like a bit of a mess right now, but once we paint it, that's when it's really gonna start looking cool. Do this for both sides, obviously. The hip joints, because they're so small, I only took one of these noodle strips. I actually cut it in half, and it worked just great for both pieces of the hip. The neck being the smallest piece of all, and having that much of it go into the head and that much of it go into the body, I just use spray foam and we'll decorate that up. But there's really no no uh, room for any kind of noodle. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I've never actually used this to actually fill in gaps, like it says, until now. Just using it for, you know, what it's for. <laughs> now things are gonna get just a little trickier, but still fun. So, moving on to the legs and feet. So for the feet, I wanted them to kind of have this effect right here. <laughs> so, I got two of these foam rings, and this will be our foot. Now, I went and stretch wrapped the whole thing at first. In, I had to do it in patches like this, and I heat I heat wrapped it on there so it's on there nice and tight. And then to add a little more texture, I can wrap the entire thing. Now, when I heat this on, it's just gonna start tearing. gonna have to take some of the liquid latex or Mod Podge or Elmer's glue and spread it on here because I want to strengthen this plastic up so that it kind of stays just like this as a foot. Very careful with that webbing because I want it to stay there. I'm gonna get both the top and the bottom to really give it some strength. I also went back to all of the small little parts that we wrapped up earlier and put a protective mold of latex over them as well. Now while that stuff is drying, I'm going to get started on the legs. The legs are where I'm really going to start creating a third dimension to this guy. So the pipe is the innermost layer, but we still need some texture in there because you'll probably be able to see through the vines and whatever else we put up around the leg as we build up the layers. Uh, we don't want the innermost layer to just be some flat white pipe. So I'm putting stretch wrap on it. I'm twisting the wrap to give it some different kind of texture and different roughness. Plus, things actually stick to the stretch wrap a lot better than they stick to the PVC pipe itself. So it serves for two purposes. I'm actually going to go out and paint these black before I really start building over the top of them because it'll be really hard to paint it later once everything is already on there. So if we paint it as we layer it, we don't miss anything. Same deal with the spine. Wrap it, 
twist it, beat it on. We'll let this first layer of black dry. And then I'll come out, I'll flip it around, look and see what kind of spots that we miss, because there's always something that you miss. And we'll make sure that we really get a nice, thick undercoat of black. One last small little detail that I'm going to do with the painting of the stuff that's going to be mostly hidden. The, uh, the legs and the spine, which will be up here. I can't put it up there because it's too tall for my shop. Um, I'm going to dry brush some earthy tones on there, but I'm not going to put a whole lot of detail on the legs and the spine. Because like I said, they're going to get buried. The legs are going to get buried with the vines. The spine is going to get buried in a rib cage and guts. Just those little incidences when you might be able to see in between the vines and see your creature from the back, um, you'll see the spine and stuff. So we don't want it just to be a pipe. So like I said in a few of my other videos, dry brushing is just getting the very, very tip of the brush wet, not dunking it in and getting the whole thing wet. I just want to get just the very top uppermost layer just barely after throwing in a couple of browns and greens and just earthy tones I didn't take a lot of time to detail it I just threw them on there we're ready to start building up the legs building onto the legs is gonna be pretty much the same concept as building onto the hips and the shoulders we're gonna take the vines and we're gonna twist them over themselves and we're gonna work it up the leg the difference is the leg is so long that some of the vines I'm going to have coming from the bottom and some I'm going to start from the top of the hip. I'm going to intertwine them and they'll meet somewhere in the middle, but I'm going to hide all the, the middle endings of the vines so you can't tell where one starts and one ends. So starting at the top of the leg, I taped the vine on at kind of a crooked angle and then I just started winding down. and I've already added one of the feet on. I taped on that end that had the rest of the plastic and now I'm gonna start moving back up and as I twist around I'm going to cover right up over this end again so you can't tell really once we get a bunch of these on here where it starts and where it ends there's just gonna be vines all over these legs looking like the creature just grew up out of the ground. With the vine that went up through the bottom, I ended up tucking in the end of that underneath that first vine that went down from the top. After I feel like I've got a sufficient amount of vines, I've got four coming off the bottom and three off the top. And compared to that other little stick leg over there, it's looking really good. I stuck tape on wherever I needed to kind of hold it in place and I used the black electrical tape because we're going to be painted black anyways and then I did a real quick thin layer of plastic around the whole thing and I'm going to sh heat shrink that on there so it's really tight and those vines pop back through a little bit so I've just got the heat gun on a low heat so I don't melt the plastic too fast but I do want it to split back apart a little bit in between but still hold tight to everything else. When you're done, you should have the vines popping back out. You should have a lot of webbing and tearing. And everything is on there nice and tight now. And then I even took the heat and heated up each end so that it is permanently part of the foot now. Once you get both legs done, you are going to need to either stick some liquid latex to build a nice little mold or some Mod Podge to really strengthen this up so it can stand up against the weather. I also did one more thin little layer around the foot and the vines on the foot and the leg down here and then heated it on so that it started bursting and getting these webbings and just things that are really really make it look like it's popping up out of the ground after it's painted. Now while that's drying, I'm going to work on the upper half of the creature. Um, I'm going to do his, his body, his ribs. We're going to use pool noodles because I want to keep it light again. 
Uh, I'm probably going to do five ribs per side, so he's going to have ten ribs, because it is a creature, not a human, so he's not going to have the amount of ribs that humans have. Anyways, so on the spine, yeah, I'm not going to go all the way down the spine, because that just wouldn't look right. So I'll probably go from the top to uh, maybe a little lower than the middle. Um, because this part, if this thing were human, would be where his stomach and all that stuff is, but it is just not going to have a stomach. I'm going to make the ribs a little thicker than the vines that I've been doing before. So I'm going to take a couple of pool noodles and I'm just going to cut them in half. One pool noodle will give me two, well, it'll be four because it's going to wrap around the spine, around and connect in front at the sternum, but I don't know how long the sternum has to be yet until I get the ribs all cut. So, let's cut the ribs. It's the easiest way to do it. To figure out how long I want to make the sternum, which is this bone right here, I'm going to set out all the ribs, and I'm going to grab the spine, and I'm going to space them apart evenly on the spine to see how far apart I need the ribs and how long I need to make the sternum. So total length from top to bottom I've got 21 inches however I'm not just doing a solid sternum piece because the creature is a bunch of twisted vines and stuff so go longer than you think you might possibly need. I actually have a small piece of noodle left over from a previous project. It's actually 27 inches and you know what? I actually, I'm just going to leave it at 27. That's fine too because again I can cut it off if I need to. I'm going to cut this guy in half and twist them together. And I want to keep it nice and thick so instead of individually wrapping these like I'm going to do with the ribs, I'm going to wrap this entire thing in plastic. I'm going to have to tape each end before I do that though or it's just going to go crazy on me. After you get the ends of it taped up, it'll kind of do its own little twisty thing. You've got some of the inside of the tube twisting onto the outside and it just actually kind of looks really cool. With the heat gun again, I'm going to use the low heat so that we tighten the plastic but we don't shrink the foam. We don't want it to shrink. I want it to stay as thick as possible, especially on this piece. Thicker spots, I'm going to cause it to purposely tear and start webbing. Not the entire thing. In the end, this ended up being 25 inches long. That's interesting. So it's only, I only lost two inches. I only need 21 inches, so I'm actually going to take a little bit off of both ends of this thing. So cut that out tape. Now I'm going to solidify it with the liquid latex. Now the parts of the foam that are exposed are going to be extremely porous when we paint it. So get as much of that covered up with that latex as possible or the Mod Podge or Elmer's Glue or whatever you're using so that when we go to paint it it doesn't just keep sucking all that paint in. Now you should be able to go back over to the legs. Um, we're now going to take the spray foam and we're going to fill in some of the spots. Not everything, like I said, it's fine if the pipe shows through. We don't want to completely bury the vines either we're just going to fill in some of these bigger gaps like dirt came up with the vines. This will really start filling in once this all dries. I also put a little bit of foam on the sternum to dry. Now is a really good point to just kind of let everything dry. Even down on the feet I went kind of down inside and on the outside I went crazy down on the feet because obviously they're going to be very dirty when dealing with the ribs, now I'm going to use the crafting wire to help shape the ribs. Um, I chose the 16 gauge wire. Uh, it's thick enough without being too thick and too hard to bend. The way they gauge wire really quick is it's kind of weird because the higher the gauge, the smaller the wire. So a 20 gauge wire would actually be a much thinner, smaller wire. I didn't think that would be enough to be able to shape the ribs. So I'm using the 16 gauge. 
I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm taking the wire and I'm actually stretching it out the length of the rib. And I'm actually going to leave about this much sticking out of both ends. That way I can just kind of poke it right into the sternum. So I want to go beyond the rib on both sides just a little bit. After you heat wrap some plastic around the rib, you should have a little bit sticking out of both ends, just like this. And I'm going to do that to all of the ribs. Now, before we actually assemble anything, I'm going to paint the sternum, the ribs, and the legs all black. Now, because we painted the inside earlier, you really don't have to worry about painting too deep. Now, all you have to really do is just paint the surface. All dry. Let's build us some ribs. The ribs are generally extremely close to what will be, you know, shoulder blades, but I'm going to leave just a little bit of space up at the top here so I can fill it in with gore or whatever later. So I'm going to mark on the back side of the piece dedicated as the spine two and a half inches for each rib. I'm going to make a little pen mark here so I know where to place them. Next, finding the center point of each rib I want to equal on both sides I'm connecting it with some electrical tape here just in the shape of an X pick which side you want to be the top wire that's sticking out here you're just gonna poke it right into the sternum now to get the ribs to stay attached to the sternum I'm actually gonna cut a small piece of plastic and I'm gonna heat shrink the plastic to connect the ribs to the sternum. Once you get the front of it done, go up on the back side and do the back. I just did the same thing with the plastic as I did the tape. I just kind of wrapped it around in the shape of an X. The black plastic I'm using just to save myself a step in painting. I'm just going to keep working on some patches wherever I feel like it's necessary to make sure that these ribs hold tight gonna take on a grody little look of its own. Now to make it look like he's not like just a big fat guy, um, I took some string, tied it from his sternum to his spine to kind of squish in the, uh, <laughs> let's take the head off so we don't break it. Squish in the ribs a little like this and the wires are gonna help keep it shape because the next thing I'm gonna do is take just one layer of clear stretch wrap around the whole thing and then I'm going to spray foam in between the ribs in certain spots the plastic that I'm going to put on I'm not heating it on there it's just to keep the spray foam in place at this point I'm gonna shape the plastic the best I can to the ribs because it doesn't really need to be flailing everywhere And now, back to the foam. I'm going to do a light layer just around all the edges. And uh, it can be holy so that it can be see-through. But I do want it to kind of fill in the gaps around the ribs. I'm going to have to do the bottom side, let it dry a bit, flip it around, and do the other side. Once the foam is dry enough to the touch, we'll flip it over. You'll know it's dry enough to the touch because if it wasn't, I couldn't touch it. It would stick to my glove and probably rip a hole right in the thing. So nothing's falling off the top. That's a good thing. And just to keep some of the pressure off the ribs, I'm actually bracing it up with a spray can. It's mostly hold, being held up by the ribs, but the spray cans are just holding it in place so that I can spray foam the other side. Look, 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 look! Okay, so I let it do all of its expanding, all of its drying, and this is why I left the plastic on loose. Come check it out. So now, instead of it just being flat right up against the ribs, it's got some third dimension to it. It just bursted through the ribs. It was able to expand with the plastic, which is exactly what we wanted. Because if it was just flat up against the ribs, it would just kind of look 
I don't know. It wouldn't look good. Down into that mess. Pretty disgusting. If I put a light down in here once we're done, I did leave it very open. There's holes everywhere. So it should just, like a red light glowing through this thing or a green light glowing through this thing is going to look awesome. Now with the next step, there's the choice you can either carefully pull the plastic off, it comes off really easy, but you might lose some of your foam, which is alright if you've got a ton in there, which I do. <laughs> uh, but I'm actually going to just heat up this plastic so much that it just it stretches and it tears and there's not going to be much of this plastic left after I basically heat it to death, but then I can paint over some of that on the foam, I can paint over it on the rib. I'll use that to my advantage. So I do want to show you really quickly. It does, the plastic will come right off. See how it, you can see it looks like it's really stuck here. It pops right off. That's your option there. Um, hopefully you can see what I'm going to do with the gun here. You don't want to heat it up so much that it goes all the way through and starts getting this the original plastic stuff and it burns right through to the tubes. But I am going to heat this up quite a bit. The plastic is coming off all over the place, but it's leaving these little strings kind of attaching it which when we end up painting this, that's really gonna look gory. Now down around the bottom and up around the top, I've actually got a little extra just kind of hanging over. You can melt that around the corner if you want. I'm actually just gonna trim off the excess stuff because I don't really need that much more since everything down here is already covered. After I do that, I'm gonna reconnect all of the end stuff on a low heat. I don't want to melt through this old the other stuff that was already on there I just want to kind of meld it together here after I touch up what I need I'm actually just gonna do a really light misting of black over the whole thing I don't want to soak it like this stuff here I just want to mist over it so that there's just spots of it hit so it just starts darkening it a little bit. Now he officially has a slight case of smoker lungs. Well, if I have to say anything about this guy, he has definitely been eating his Wheaties. He's a big dude. <laughs> but he's still looking a little skinny. I think I need to fill in something right around this area right here. Something maybe attached from the legs to the ribs or just fill in this area. I'm going to take another noodle. And I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to take those two halves and split them in half. So that I have four small pieces that look like this. Going to look like this. So in a nutshell, we're taking two of the pieces, connecting them close to the center at the top, doing an S curve, and meaning almost at the end at the bottoms. And we'll take another go at the very end of each rib and just a straight curve to give it that look. Stretch wrap, heat, leave a little bit of play at both ends to connect. is drying I'm gonna take some of these small insulation foam backer rods and I'm going to work a little around the neck I want the arms to still be able to disconnect so I'm just gonna go from the cross joint to the rib cage the backer rod foam is like one big long foam rope and so I'm going to use that to my advantage but first I am gonna paint it here so with the rope I'm going to the best I can, I'm going to try and find the middle. I'm going to put the two end pieces together. 
right there's the middle now this is the part that's going to go right behind the neck the head will be right here these are the two shoulders just so you know kind of what you're looking at here here's the centerpiece and it's going to go right behind the neck cross and then I'm going to start going from the neck up to the ribs back and forth on this side and back and forth on this side so it just looks like tendons tendrils anyways it's gonna look like crap is connecting from his body to his head there you can see it. it's all twisted through and around and then I just kinda of ended it back here and just used a little bit more electrical tape now I'm just gonna do the same on the other side it is time to detail now instead of doing a whole long video on how I'm doing all the detail I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do and then I'll show you in the end uh, so I'm gonna use you know earthly colors I'm gonna use colors that you would know would come up out of a swamp just nasty greens colors that would come up out of the earth browns tans and colors that would just come up out of a pumpkin patch so I may have some darker yellows I'll show you the end result right now two shades of brown bam, bam. randomly sprayed dry brushing some tan my secret ingredient leather stain the putrid color of avocado green some green especially in some of the spots where the plastic stretches really gives it a nasty awesome finishing touch and the last piece is bile yellow I mean well why not right it's it's called bile I mean it's kind of self-explanatory but I'm only using this on just the very very tips of the foam I'm not touching any of the plastic just some of the foam bubbles I'm just brushing it right over the very tips of it just bringing out a highlight with a little bit of bile. It's also not a bad idea to spray a clear coat over the top of everything to protect all the paint against the weather. Finally, I attached the legs to the hips and I slid the whole thing over a couple of rebars that I had pounded down into the ground. After I attached his arms and his head, I went onto Amazon and I got a really cheap five pack of vines and I use that to kind of decorate him up. Uh, so there's some spooky netting on there and it really brought this creature together. Be sure to check out some of my other videos including all the other pieces of this guy. I built some posable arms, I built his head. Check him out, I'll include the links below. Until then, keep it spooky my crazy friends. <laughs> <laughs>